Good morning, everyone, and can I welcome you to our morning worship here at Brails for Church? And it was wonderful that when you came into church, you could hear the bells ringing. Can I welcome all of you who will be watching this service later on our YouTube channel? You are very welcome. You may not be here in person, but you are with us in spirit, and our prayers are with you. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of our lives. We give you thanks for the gift of your church. May you bless us now and may we have a sense of your peace and your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. Very different this morning for me doing a communion service like this. And so the communion service that we're actually using is the service that we use at Shirley Church on a Wednesday afternoon. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to break bread together, let us bring to our merciful Father the things that prevent us from serving him with all our heart, mind and strength. And believing that God is faithful to forgive, let us rid ourselves of the things we need to carry no longer. In a short time of silence, we reflect upon our lives and the ways in which we have failed to love and serve God and one another. Lord, if we are separated from you by busyness or fear, forgive us and heal us. If we are separated from you by injustice and apathy, forgive us and heal us. If we are separated from you by materialism and greed, Forgive us and heal us if we are separated from you by bad relationships or by our unwillingness to forgive. Forgive us and heal us if we are separated from you by pride and the belief that we can do things in our own strength. Forgive us and heal us. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to grow in love. Amen. The special prayer for this week, which is prayed throughout the Anglican Church, the 12th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy. Forgive us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through thoughts, the merits and meditations of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite Fran to come and do our Bible reading. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, and beginning at verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? 
For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay every man for what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In my previous church, St Peter's in the centre of Derby, by default, we became, for a period, what was known as a deaf church. That wasn't because the vicar was shouting at everybody so much. It was that we had, for a time, a number of people from the deaf community worshipping with us, which was great fun at one level, because it really made me be challenged in how I communicate to people. So the diocese, in its wisdom, sent me on a crash course to learn sign language. And I don't know if any of you can do any sign language, but after two and a half years, I could only still just spell my name. And I would go week in, week out, and I would sit with other students who do the six-week course, disappear, the next six weeks lot would come, and then they would disappear, and I was still doing, my name is P-A, the U was there, and there was an L somewhere, and I've even forgotten that bit. And that was about as far as I got. And I could see the, the teacher, who had a great deal of patience, despairing. And I would try and explain to her that partly with my dyslexia, I couldn't turn around because she'd be standing there teaching us and I couldn't turn it around. And I ended up learning all sorts of stupid signs. And thankfully, those people who were hard of hearing, who came to the church, thought it was greatly hysterical that the vicar, after all these years, could still only say, my name is Paul. And they would say, isn't it Aren't you fortunate that that's only four letters and you didn't have something like Zechariah because there'd have been no hope. I tell you that because Jesus must have been profoundly frustrated with the disciples. He is about to go on the journey to Jerusalem. He's about to face death on the cross. And Peter, the great St. Peter, gets it wrong again when Jesus says, I'm going to suffer. And Peter says, no, this isn't going to happen. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't having a nasty go at Peter, but he was actually challenging Peter to say, at that moment in time, you are behaving in a way that is not helpful to my ministry and my journey. And it's the same words that Jesus used when he was being tempted. Satan, get behind me, go away. What temptations get in the way of your journey? of your faith? Are you somebody a bit like me that can suddenly have a short temper? Are you somebody who can respond in a negative way? Are you somebody that doesn't look for the good in other persons? What is it? What are your shortcomings that you don't necessarily like about yourself? And what is it that gets in the way of your service of Jesus? Because Jesus goes on and he says to the disciples, you have to be prepared to put me First, I have to be the most important person in your life. And of course, if we look at our world today, that is so different, uh, such a different message that comes out. We live in a world where I'm being told to shop like mad to rescue the economy. And yet the Christian faith is so very different to some of the messages we're getting. Yesterday, I watched with great enthusiasm the ladies' Tour de France, and I won't even try and pronounce the, uh, the, the word for their particular journey. I mean, they only rode, I think, 98 kilometres. That's all they actually did yesterday. And uh, it was phenomenal just watching it. I have an interest in it because I once, a few years ago, actually saw the Tour de France, and I stood for something like three hours, and after about 14 seconds, they'd all gone past. But the speed, if you've ever seen it, that these people were going. And I like to watch it on television because you can see them going up the hills, you know, and they drop from 50 kilometres to 40 kilometres or something. But you see, yesterday I went for a bike ride. I actually went from Long Eaton and I cycled to Shipley Park along the canal and back again. Nearly 16 miles. I am still shattered. 
And I feel it this morning. And most of that was on a level and I could stop because of the locks. I tell you that because the dedication of those cyclists and the lady who won it was an English lady and I can't remember her name, but she's been through quite a tough time and she's fought her way back to being the peak of her, you know, of being the very, very best. You and I as Christians need to have something of that attitude when we seek to serve God. We need to work hard at trying to be the very best that we can be. I am never going to be able to do sign language very well. So there's no point me spending hours trying to develop it. But I've got other skills, gifts and talents which I can put into practice to the glory of God. What is it that you've got? What is it that your skill, what is it that makes you unique? What has God given you so that you can put that into practice to make your world this small part of our world, a better place. Jesus challenges the disciples and he's very, very clear, very, very clear that he has to come first in our lives. And so often I fall well short of that and I know you will, but we have that wonderful gift of forgiveness. And I come back to that first word where Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. There were two translations for that. When Jesus says it actually to the devil, he's saying, get behind me. You cannot be part of being a disciple because you are Satan. The words, the Greek words, which I won't try and explain because I can't say them properly, but the Greek words are very different. It says, get behind me, Satan, but you can still be part of the journey of the Christian faith. And they're the words that Peter hears from Jesus. Yes, get behind me. At the moment, you're getting wrong, but I'm not banishing you. And one of the great gifts that we have as Christians is that we are all welcome. We are all loved. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, but none of us, none of us are excluded. And for me, that is one of the powerful messages that we need to communicate to our world and our community that our faith and what this church represents is so very, very important. And we need to fight for it. We need to acknowledge it. We need to guard it in these very changing times. May God continue to bless you this week. If you choose to go on a cycle ride, don't try and do 98 miles up a hill. We do have one member of our congregation here who does exactly that. Would you believe it? And they're a few years older than me. I haven't caught them up yet. But whatever you do this week, may you know God's peace, God's presence and God's love and that sense that he walks with you in the ups and downs that we all face. Let us just be quiet for a few moments. Amen. As we continue in prayer at the end of each section of the prayers of intercession, there'll just be a moment of silence when we can offer our own thoughts and prayers to God. And so we bring to God someone whom we have met or remembered today and for whom we want to pray. Loving God, bring life and peace. We bring to God someone who is hurting today and who needs our prayers. Loving God, bring life and peace. We bring to God a troubled situation in our world today. Loving God, bring life and peace. We bring to God our church and its leaders. Loving God, bring life and peace. We bring to God someone we find it hard to forgive or to love. Loving God, bring life and peace. We bring ourselves to God that we might grow in obedience and faith, in generosity of spirit, in courage and in love. Loving God, accept these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace? If, like me, you're standing on your own, you can't share the peace with anybody, but if you're with your bubble and you wish to do so, then please do. Christ is the Prince of Peace who breaks down the walls that separate us from God and from one another. 
May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also be with you. If you wish to share a sign of peace, if not, wave at somebody or whatever is appropriate. Would you please sit for our communion prayer? We bring to this table bread and wine, which earth has given and human hands have made. Come to us, Lord Jesus Christ, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of bread. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, present with us now, for all that you have done and all that you have promised, what have we to offer? Our hands are empty, our hearts are sometimes full of wrong things. We're not fit to gather up the crumbs from under your table. But with you is mercy and the power to change us. So as we do in this place what you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us your body, healing, forgiving and making us whole and that we may become for you your body, loving and caring in the world until your kingdom comes. Amen. Among friends and gathered round a table, Jesus took bread, broke it and said, This is my body, it is broken for you. And later he took the cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God, made possible because of my death. Take this, all of you. Let us pray for ourselves and for our world. In the words of the prayer which Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us those trespasses who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Christ's body was broken on the cross for us. Christ is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ is risen from the dead. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. I've asked the church wardens if they would come and direct each pew to come forward to take uh, a wafer back to their pew or to your, your pew. If you don't wish to take communion, then please just stay in your pew. If you wish to take communion but it's not possible to come forward, then if you just let the wardens know and I will bring you a wafer at the end. As we go through a very different style of doing communion. Let us enjoy the silence and sitting still and being in this wonderful building where people have worshipped for a thousand years. The prayer we're going to pray now is a wonderful prayer. It's an inclusive prayer, whether we have received communion or not. It's a prayer that reminds each one of us that God touches us wherever we are. And so we pray, Father, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith and fill us afresh with your spirit, that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you have been fed at this table, go to feed the hungry. As you've been set free from sin, go to set others free. As you have received, give. As you have heard, share the good news in the name and power of Christ. And the peace of God, 
which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, and all those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the risen Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Next Sunday, there will be a communion service here at 10 o'clock. And the following week, we're at Osmiston. And then it will be, at the moment, alternate weeks as we continue to make sense of all the changes of what we can and cannot do. A number of people asked, why can we not have uh, two different services on a Sunday at different churches? At this moment in time, I'm only allowed to go to one church. Uh, if that changes, then obviously we'll make some changes. All the services at the moment will be at 10 o'clock uh, and all the information is on the website. Uh, at each of the churches we go to, it will not always be communion because some people have said they want to come, but they don't want a communion service. Other people do want communion. So the aim is that Osmiston will be morning prayer and Brailsford at the moment will be a communion service. We are hoping uh, in the not too distant future to try and include Shirley in the, the programme of services. The difficulties we have with our three smaller churches is that we have to obviously have social distancing and you can only get a handful of people in them. But we are trying to work through the practicalities. So bear with us and uh, any constructive feedback, then please do tell us. Uh, we're going to leave church now, as it were, uh, listening to Tim play uh, on the organ. May God bless you and may you know his peace. Amen.